Libraries build on the concept of lists. It's like I said in the previous lesson, when we're talking about SharePoint lists previously, uh, every app in SharePoint is based around a list. So as you can see, I, I have my grocery list over here that we just talked about with my columns. And if we go to my documents library, we can see I have columns. I have a name column. I have a modified and a modified by column. So <laughs> that's it's a list. It just refers to a document. I can go in and, and view my articles here with the word web app. So that that really is the gist of it. Um, a, a library is just a list with a document in it. The other cool thing. Just like if you go to your own public library and you have a library card, you can go look at a book. And if you like it, you can check it out. SharePoint lets you do that with files in libraries. You can check out the file. And what that does is it locks the file from it being edited by anybody else other than who has it checked out. And if I hover over this, you see there's a green symbol here. If I hover over it, you can see it's checked out to Matthew St. Lawrence. So that means... Charles could not come in here and edit my building a library document. He would have to actually wait until I check it back in or discard my checkout. When I check it back in, it's going to say, do you want to retain your checkout? So that's sort of like saving your work. Um, in other words, I can save it and update the document and continue working in it. And I can put comments in, like if I updated the, the font. Okay. But the thing is, if I have this lot, this document checked out, SharePoint knows who's trying to get it. So if Charles tries to go in, it's going to say, this file is checked out. You can edit it, or you can view it, but you cannot edit it until it's checked back in. So I could go in and update the file so Charles could go in and see what I updated, send me an email and say, hey, yeah, it looks good, and then I could check it back in. But until I do that, he won't actually be able to edit it. So there's no late fees, but you might have some users that aren't too happy with you. So with that covered, let's talk about the other types of libraries that you can create in SharePoint. If I want to go in <coughs> to SharePoint, I can go in and say, oh, I can make a document library. You've got a noteworthy uh, link up here that kind of groups together the ones that most people use. Um, but you can make a document library, which is what we're using there, that basically lets you store documents and files. Um, you can create an InfoPath form library, which is this here. And that lets you create a form in Microsoft InfoPath. And then users can go and click. And, and once you publish the form to that form library, users can go and fill out the form and save it. It'll save a copy of the form that they filled out to the library. This would be useful on things like an equipment checkout form or something that you need to have a paper physical copy of and not something you'd want to store in SharePoint um, in a list format, but in a form format. Um, you can also do a picture library, which is pretty self-explanatory. You can store images and pictures in there. There's also a media library. Let me see where that is. I think it's on the next page. <sighs> I might not have it enabled. But a media library is basically like an asset library. Okay, you can see there's a little film strip here on the asset library. That means you can store image, uh, images, you can store videos, you can store audio files. Um, things like that. It's based around media, and it just helps you organize them a little bit better. Um, the other two would be site pages and site assets. And especially on my, <clears throat> excuse me, on my public site, I have these. I don't think I have them on my team site, but the wiki page library is a page library. Okay, it's sort of like site pages, and it stores web pages only. As a matter of fact, I'll just show you right now. If I go to my public site, and I go into page menu, and I go to my view all pages, this is going to take me to my pages library. Okay, now there's also, and that you can see these are all the pages I have in here. If I go to my end user, end user site, these are all the pages I have. If I go back to my contents, and I look, I should see a site assets. And you can see these are all the pictures I have. Uh, here's the camera image. That's what I'm using as a placeholder for the videos. But I can store assets. And assets for the site are things like images or um, getting further into CSS files and XML files. But anything that, that is used by the site for pages or things that the site needs that you don't want intermingled with your documents. So that's 
that's the rundown on site pages and site asset libraries. So they're all they are at the end of the day is just another kind of list. And the only difference is they refer to a document in SharePoint. The other cool thing about a document library is that whenever you're selecting files, you, you, you can do operate. It's mainly based around doing one to one operations. So I'm working on this one file. I'm going to go in and I can edit it in the browser. I can check it out, all these types of things. But let's say I need to work on five or more of these, or I need to move three of these to my computer. I can go to library and it lets me open it with Explorer and I can click on that button and it should pop up any time now. And with an Explorer window, that'll show me the documents in the library, similar to what you see here. So that's pretty much how that works. And we're having a problem <laughs> that those are the, the features of it. We'll get further into it. And I'll make sure that's working whenever I show you how to build a library later on in the creating content section of the course. But that's really all you need to know about libraries. If you have any other trouble or you want to review the article, feel free and be sure to check out the next lesson.